going on everybody it's coach jan here and we are at tai chi to the people and welcome 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 uh of course we do this every week and uh today i was i was actually watching a, this wonderful elon musk uh uh a future worth of getting excited about uh video so i highly recommend checking that out just really really inspiring stuff that uh he's talking about on there uh, for the future of the world. So with that being said, Tai Chi to the People is presented by Justice for Hire. Justice for Hire is a show that I am producing with a, a global community. And you can join the cast. Anyone can join the cast, <laughs> Anyone can join the cast right from their phone uh, at justiceforhire.app. You can learn, uh, you can become a hero or a villain in the cast or a client that hires heroes and villains. So it's a pretty uh, I mean, it's essentially groundbreaking. No one's ever done it before. And it's uh, it's the first show of our company, Real World, R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D, because you're in it, and that is completely focused on making movies and shows with communities. So uh, if you want to join our first show, uh, especially if you're a martial artist, uh, you know, it's an action heavy show. When I say heavy, I mean like thematically um, focused on, on action. It's really, really fun stuff, really fun community, really sweet creative people. So I just highly recommend uh, becoming a part of it. And uh, I'm inspired every day by, by the, the, the great folks um, that, have, that have come together on this project. So uh, check us out, justiceforhire.com, justiceforhire.app. Uh, you can invest and own a part of the company, a real world that's producing Justice for Hire on wefunder.com slash R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D slash real world. And you can learn about what it means to be doing a community round. Uh, so essentially, like anybody can own a part of our company the same way anyone can join the cast. And it's a huge opportunity because it's a huge market. And uh, where we are right now in culture with film and television, it's really, really interesting. It's essentially the Wild West. And uh, it's, it is closer to the 1910s and 1920s. Um, yeah, the, where we are now, um, it's not the 1990s anymore. <laughs> uh, and and community-based filmmaking is the future. So for us to be the first, the world's first social film studio is a huge deal. So uh, we'd love for you to join us and become part of this uh, this historical uh, moment and build uh, a company that's that's uh, really helping to shape the future of film and TV. So. Um, that being said, uh, I love Tai Chi and I love sharing Tai Chi. I'm the former captain and coach of the U.S. Tai Chi Push Hands team. And you can always find out more about me I'm on janstaichi.com. And of course, I've launched a Patreon uh, to support videos like this and uh, uh, even more detailed uh, Tai Chi videos. So, uh, you know, it, I got my first patron this past week. I haven't even officially launched it yet. It's just, just put it online. And uh, so I got my first patron this week. So the, the, thanks so much, Sam. <laughs> and uh you know i want to grow that as well because thematically whether it's justice for hire or real world or tai chi it's all tai chi to me uh it's all <clears throat> building bridges the thing for me about tai chi but really about living is building bridges from uh the things that, that from wisdom to practicality and you know the, there are so many things that we enjoy every day um, that have been made practical in our lives, <clears throat> you know, like electricity, um, that we don't necessarily need to go and <clears throat> set up a grid ourselves or uh, know exactly how the light switch works and all these other things. But, but there's a really practical uh, use for it in our daily lives. And I think Tai Chi is one of those things. Um, I think cinema is, is one of those things. Uh, and how can we start using cinema to, to uh, positively affect our lives? That's why I started Real World. Uh, how can we use heroism to positively affect our lives? That's why we, I'm producing Justice for Hire. How can we use Tai Chi to uh, make our body, mind, spirit connection more dynamic and interact with the, uh, our entire world, uh, starting with ourselves in a more optimized way? Hence, Tai Chi to the people. So let's get to it. <laughs> so, and I'm drinking this tea not to, um, uh, not to bite off. This is kind of a shout out to hybrid calisthenics. If you don't follow hybrid calisthenics, on Instagram, I highly recommend him. He also practices Tai Chi, just really, um, just a really smooth, like really, really cool guy um, doing a lot of body, body weight exercises. Again, that's hybrid calisthenics. Um, but my, my girlfriend made me this tea so that I can, 
relax a little bit more because I've been working very, very intensely, not resting a lot. Hence, even uh, going to the uh, World Series of Tai Chi push hands with hardly any sleep and not necessarily on a great diet, but still was an amazing and historic event. So I'm gonna shoot this tea. And let's do it. And my mom is, is in town too. She came for my birthday a week and a half ago. So this is her second to last day. We're gonna finish watching Batman. It's gonna be great. So today we're gonna work on some fun stuff. And one of the, I ran a poll this past week and the poll was about what you guys want to see. And uh, specifically the poll was, was on my Tai Chi channel because this video lives on both the Justice for Hire channel and on my Coach Jan's Tai Chi, Sports Tai Chi Push Hands channel. Um, I am most interested in, yeah, help my mom over here, hold on. So I am most interested in sharing uh, detailed Tai Chi Push Hands uh, videos so that people understand that there is a, a way for us to, to uh, share push hands that is not simply, um, and I, I simply has quotation, quotation marks around it, um, but uh, not simply based on having uh, the sensitivity to touch. Um, the, the touch of push hands, the sensitivity, the movement is so, so important. As a matter of fact, maybe my mom will join me to take, no, I can't do it right now because of the, uh, the noise. No, you know what? Uh, I, I'm, I'm live right now. On, oh, on, sorry. If you want to do some push hands with me and show. I'm not right this moment. Okay. I'm exhausted. She's wonderful. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying stuff. So, uh, and my mom, I grew up doing, uh, watching my mom and my dad do push hands. So push hands is so important. Sensitivity you develop is, is phenomenal. Um, and in fact, um, there is, uh, there, there's what I call overt push hands where you see these really big circles and, and, and I don't do any of that. <laughs> I do, uh, when I do the drills, the flow drills, as they would call it in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, uh, the flow drills that help me become um, good enough to be recruited by Josh Waitzkin onto the US Tai Chi Push Hands team, those flow drills I, I were always very precise, very small, and very sharp. Uh, and they all came, all of them came from the Wu style of Tai Chi Push Hands. Uh, I was never into Yang style push hands. That's not to take away from any Yang stylists out there, uh, but I was never into the, uh, the Yang style flow drills. Uh, however, the Yang style competitive, um, uh, uh, let me not call it Yang style competitive, Grandmaster William C.C. Chen's ecosystem uh, was, was phenomenal uh, for push hands. And of course, they're all reverse breathing Yang stylists over there. So um, uh, that being said, the poll, the, <laughs> the poll is all about, you guys want to see Tai Chi applied to other martial arts. And that 67% of you said that you want to see that. 19% of you said that you want to see more detailed push hands videos. Of course, I want to make more detailed push hands videos, but let's start out with other martial arts. I, I grew up in Kung Fu and Tai Chi. Uh, but I, I, I trained with John Machado. John Machado, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, is a mentor and dear friend of mine. Um, and uh, I fought Sancho for the title. Uh, uh, Beijing coach, renowned Beijing coach, and I was on his New York International um, uh, uh, fight team, his Sancho team. I fought his pro team, Beijing team, um, when I was 18 and 19. And it was terrifying. Really terrifying. <laughs> uh, I, well, and I mean that because it was not necessarily the most supportive ecosystem, but uh, <clears throat> it was it was a great experience. And I was under Captain Nobel G. Bell, who you may know as the Black Taoist. Um, so uh, I, I learned a lot of different, and I've trained boxing, Muay Thai, Sanda, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, aspects of wrestling. I've trained judo, Greco Roman, etc. So. All these martial arts are simply martial art, and Tai Chi can offer us an amazing, an amazing approach. I consider Tai Chi an approach rather than a style, because if someone tells you shadow fist, oh, you cover the fist and shadow fist, and it works. I mean, if you ever watch Wu Gong Ni on that rooftop fight for the shadow fist, it's not very uh, dynamic, you know. So just because you do Tai Chi and you have all this beautiful. Uh, self-awareness and, and sensitivity and great circulation, et cetera, doesn't mean you understand the science of angles and timing and how to use rhythm against an opponent 
and to understand the thinking of an opponent and to play push hands with an opponent's mind. Uh, all high level martial artists have the capability of doing aspects of this. So what I'd like to show uh, today and, and really start embarking on today, and I think the, the last few weeks, if you watch my last few videos, um, I, I started doing more of this stuff. I'm talking a lot right now, but uh, uh, tomorrow you'll actually see my, my hip video uh, on hip mechanics, by, uh, hip toss mechanics, uh, hip softening mechanics, et cetera, to help you in judo, swaj out, BJJ, uh, push hands for throwing. Um, but today I want to focus on, we're going to go high, mid, low. We're going to do high, mid, low exercises for practical martial arts. And when I say practical martial arts, I don't mean street fighter. Well, I'm not trying to teach you how to, how, I'm not going to demonstrate having a guy stand still and say, if you hit him like this, it's not going to work. So <laughs> I'm just going to show you how to adapt the Tai Chi mechanic to a high attack, a mid attack, and a low attack. And I'm sure most of you can already do this on your own if you <clears throat> are at all trained in Tai Chi. But I will add a little bit of the thinking of rhythm, of timing, of angle. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's talk about stepping off and hooking. Stepping off and hooking is one of the most interesting uh, things for me. As a matter of fact, the first round that I won in my first tournament, which was the Kung Fu Strike Challenge, which got me on to uh, the Li Tai Lang. I won my spot on Li Tai Lang's uh, fight team through this tournament. I remember my first match was against a kid uh, or a young man who um, <clears throat> was talking about his strategy to fight me going into the ne next match. And his strategy, <clears throat> which I completely listened to and he didn't actually follow through on, he said, yeah, I know what my strategy is. And he didn't know he was going to fight me. He was just talking about it. But <clears throat> he's like, when the opponent goes straight, I'm going to do, do a circle. And when they do a circle, I'm going to come straight. And I'm like, okay, well, hold on, that's a great strategy. I'll do that. <laughs> this is before I knew too much about strategy. I was a Tai Chi guy and Shaolin Kung Fu guy going into my first fight, um, a Sancho fight. So uh, essentially, we all know jab. And I've done many videos on reverse breathing Tai Chi mechanics for the jab, inhaling, creating the shape, exhaling down. So what I'd like to talk about is doing a step off and hook. And there's two different types of stepping off. Well, there's actually many different types. But uh, one is stepping off in the direction of the, on the same side of the arm. And the other one is stepping off on the other side of the arm. And the, there's a difference. There's, a, there's actually, a, I think, a Russian boxer. Um, and I forgot his name. Uh, but I found out about him a few years ago. <clears throat> and one of the most interesting things that I saw him doing, and I think this is one uh, part of why he was uh, on YouTube, you'll see a bunch of uh, videos about this guy. Um, but essentially what he would do is he would throw a hook and then step to the other side so that the opponent is defending here and get to the other side and strike here. And I think that's really, really interesting. That was a concept that honestly was not something that I, I was, uh, I had really encountered before. No one had told me in all my years of training and fighting, et cetera, to ass essentially throw the hook and step off in the opposite way. I was pretty much always stepping off and throwing the hook and using the hook either to, to set up a leg kick or set up a strike here or another strike here, or even using the hook to push my opponent in the direction that I want them and then set up the next strike. But I never thought of it as set the hook, maybe jab, step off, throw the hook here. And you throw it wide so the opponent really sees and expects it coming here. You step off, boom come there. That to me is really, really interesting. Um, so let's focus on stepping off to the same side, and then we're going to focus on stepping off to the opposite side. Let's bring Tai Chi mechanics into this. Let's, and, you know, let's do two uplifting habits. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. And if you're unfamiliar with the Tai Chi mechanics, there's all the stuff that has to happen in my body for me to achieve it. Uh, and and uh, essentially that means relaxing. It means alignment. It means me having this imaginary string lifting me from the top of the head, my tailbone dropping straight down, my vertebrae, as I feel like I'm being lifted, the vertebrae extending, or should I say getting, getting farther and farther apart, even slightly. My hips 
should feel like a bowl of water. My weight shifts to my heels. I soften the knees. My toes remain on the ground so I don't flip my knees, my toes up, <laughs> my knees stay out. Slight bend here. My organs are completely relaxed so I soften the muscles and I bring my mind even deeper into the organs so they all feel like they're naturally sinking, sagging, hanging. If you want to add some other ideas that I'm starting to experiment with now, it's the concept of a gently floating heart, not sticking out the chest, but almost like a yoga lift of the collarbone, but more centered in the heart space. Very gentle, slight lift. And the shoulders soft and downward, but going down and back, not pulling back, but favoring back the same way that we're favoring weight on the heels. And you can even add a drop in the shoulder blades straight down, meaning that my attention, I have very clear intent with my attention to drop the shoulder blades to have them feel like they're being pulled by gravity down my back, down to the ground. All these little things help the posture. My mouth is closed, the tongue is on the ceiling of the mouth, and I cannot stress enough the importance of breath work visualization. When you inhale into your lower Dantian, that's the Tai Chi main area of focus of the, of the three Dantians. The Dantians are of the seven chakras, in, uh, uh, which you might have heard from, from Indian culture. Seven chakras, or well, the Dantian are three uh, uh, of those chakras. The lower Dantian is the second chakra. Uh, essentially a three finger length below the belly button, but not out here in the center, in here, but you can count down here and then find that space which connects to that imaginary line. That imaginary line, you inhale, use the belly to pump the breath into that area and give the sensation of breathing a color as it gathers in the belly. I recommend an orange color gathering in the belly and push it down the arms with the palms and fingertips, special attention on the middle finger of each hand. This is called gilded pillow. Three breaths here. If you want to add one more alignment concept, push through the heels very gently to the base of the skull, create distance. Every idea I share stacks on top of the other one, meaning that you don't do one thing or the other. You do one thing and then you add the other and you keep doing the other thing. <laughs> to be able to accomplish that, you have to be expanding your awareness and expanding your ability to stack items or concepts on top of each other. Um, tai Chi, in my experience, is uh, I have a massive component of it, is multiple layers of visual infrastructure. So, when you have all of these different things happening all at once because you've expanded your awareness and you can allow that, and it takes time, it may not happen right away. I may have said 20 things just now, one of them may work or three of them may work for you right now in your current state, or you might be far more advanced than anything I just said and you're already doing all those things and then some, and that's awesome. So now let's focus on taking all those concepts and bring it into our boxing stance or our fighting stance. So again, I'm a sport fighter um, and I would even say more so just like, like martial sports competitor. Um, I don't think about fighting much. I don't wanna hurt people per se. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to pre-visualize violence. I think that attracts it to you. All my friends that do that, they fight all the time and I don't hang out with them at nighttime because I don't wanna live like that. <laughs> but <laughs> so that being said, you should also like be very, very practical and be ready for, for uh, real impact and, and, and et cetera, and you should be strong enough for it. So part of that in my, from my, uh, my experience is training with great stance. And so I versus other folks, I don't keep my foot in on my front stance. Some people might. And of course there's tons of, as you can see, I already can look at, see myself in the, the, uh, in the camera. Notice how I protected my groin a little bit just by bringing my front foot in about, you know, 15 degrees or so. Not even 45 degrees to the corner. Like I'm just bringing it a little bit. I'm protecting my, my groin a little bit more. Versus forward. Forward and having that. I'm, I'm much more open here. But I do this all the time. This is actually how I score a high five. I keep my front foot forward because it, it's more like how I play push hands. And I bring my push hands game into my fight game. So, um, 
That being said, uh, do would, if, if you know a, a front stance, uh, a, a sport fighting front stance, pick the one that's best for you. Um, and if you do not know one, I offer this one to you, which is essentially a little bit different than our traditional push hand stance. Our push hand stance, 70% of the way forward, the back knee drops, the back hip drops into the front groin. We get a little wind up. Now that wind up is super important and you're gonna use this, you're gonna drop back into this anytime you get into, uh, well actually lots of times, not just in, in terms of grappling, but in, in, if you get close and go boom, then you'll start, if you tie up with an opponent, your body to body, maybe boxing, you tie up with them, now you're in a 50 50 clinch, and now you're cycling between this, this drop and this spiraling down and coming up. Makes total sense, uh, especially if you feel it. Uh, that being said, when you're not there, you're going to do the opposite. My, again, from my experience, I spiral out. I start this way, I spiral, winding the hip up slightly. So I might be here. Playing. Some people play like this. I'll play like this, turn a little bit forward. I have my elbows very, very, my shoulders very, very soft. Some people pick them up. I do my best not to because that's essentially untai chi in my, uh, my training, my upright. Meaning that the second I start doing this, while it does protect me and my face, which you don't want to get knocked out, get your chin tap, um, I would rather pop up to protect myself rather than. Um, stiffen up and just hold the entire time because that's going to make my center of gravity rise. My, uh, some might call it the chi rising, but really what it is is the attention. Too much tension blocks the attention in particular areas. <clears throat> so if I stay like this, I'm locked up here, I'm lighter on my feet. If I stay down here, I feel more easily grounded in my lower down chin area. So from this little stance, you have your little bounce. I keep my back heel off the ground. I can always clamp it in. That means that the three nails that I've talked about in previous videos, which are of course Grandmaster Williams, CZ Chen's concepts, um, but uh, I mean the the back heel as the anchor. Uh, I, I learned in, in Wu style as well. So that anchor point, boom, when it connects to the ground, as it has as if that heel locks into the ground, and that's an idea. The idea you train up with all these other Tai Chi exercises. You train that little clamping. That means that if I'm on both of my balls on my feet and tons of time, uh, Chen Chen, Chen uh, Tui Shou, uh, the 16 time Tai Chi uh, push hands world champion from the Tai Chi World Cup, you'll see him play on the balls of his feet, He's playing push hands on the balls of his feet, and all of a sudden clamp down. He'll clamp down, boom, push somebody up, clamp back down. And I, my, you know, the US Tai Chi push hands team, uh, we uh, adapted that from, from him heavily as well um, because it's so important to be able to go up and clamp yourself back down. It's not just the hips swinging and bringing you back, it's the heels. And if you want to do an exercise for that, you can do jolting from the eight brocade. Uh, and I have many detailed videos uh, of the eight brocade, so you can check that out. So, getting back to the focus of our step off and hook, we're here. We have one heel up. We're a little bit wound up, meaning we're, we're uh, twisted and wound up in the other direction. Before you throw that, that hook, you may uh, want to set up the hook, meaning that you throw a jab. Notice that my jab from here is more wound up, comes up and out. That up and out. And I'm, it's all motivated by my breathing. I'm inhaling, pressing the big toe of my foot in. Inhaling, expanding my jab out. I can also exhale. Some people might do this. I don't throw that kind of jab often um, intentionally. Uh, that's, that's more of a last resort jab for me. I'd rather do these and I practice those. So inhaling, throw it up, forward, and then we're, we can clamp in as if we're going to, we're, we're doing our push in. Remember, we did our back hip falling to the front groin. So throw the jab and you can. Clamp into that front, and now you can throw your long hook. This is a long hook that I'm doing. You can throw short hooks as well, but it really depends on the distance. If I'm playing with a jab at this distance, I would have to step in to do a shorter hook. Um, but since I'm going to do the longer hook, I'm going to stay at the same punching distance, meaning I'm going to do the jab, 
and then I'm going to step off and punch. So now we're finally getting into <laughs> the technique. Inhale, reverse breathing Tai Chi. Remember, reverse breathing Tai Chi is going to sting. You don't have to do reverse breathing. You can do uh, regular breathing. Uh, if you're doing this with me, I recommend one or the other, meaning that if you exhale and push the breath, excuse me, if you exhale and push the cut, when you exhale, if you're exhaling for the strike, push the color from the belly. You've inhaled, gathered color in the belly, exhale, push it out the arm through the palms and fingertips through these two knuckles. If you are inhaling, act like these two knuckles and the fingers themselves are vacuums. There's hoses pulling the color in into the belly, inflating the tricep. So if you exhale, push through, and if you inhale, the knuckles are as if they're vacuuming up the air and the tricep inflates. And you are inflating the shape and the shape is solid at the end. So it, there are two different mechanics and two very different sensations in the body and your opponent will feel them both differently. So that being said, I'm gonna focus on reverse breathing Tai Chi. If you wanna see a video on that and, and some boxing, uh, I have those videos online, you can see them now. So inhaling up, one and here we're winding up to throw the other jab notice that this could be a jab cross hook we could totally do jab cross hook but we're not going to do that today we're going to focus on one side and the one technique that we really want to drill down on for the high we're going to high mid and low today so inhale up exhaling down winding up a little bit inhaling i'm doing a long hook I want, I'm going to bend down a little bit so you can see how long this hook is. Now, my jab would be here. Notice for me, my jab, I keep my arm bent for the jab. I don't straighten my arm out at all. I, I, anytime I've, I've, when I've done that in the past, I've hyperextended my arm, it sucks. So I, I don't recommend doing that. So I throw the, if I'm throwing an angled hook, I'm bending over just so you can see the angled long hook coming a little closer so you can see that these two knuckles are still making contact with the chin or the temple or somewhere in the head, face, nose, etc. And you want to aim for the buttons, the chin, the temple. So inhaling up, exhale, clamp down, inhale, boom. So this should feel like you're pouring tea for somebody. Again, we're doing reverse breathing, Tai Chi mechanics adapted to boxing. So the big toes on my on my uh, front leg is always like a button, meaning that it's pressing into the ground when I shift the weight. In fact, I'm going to take the camera and bring it down so you can see what I mean by that. So here's my foot. When I have my stance, I'm in my front stance, notice that my back heel is up. Back heel is up, front leg here. And now when I throw the jab, look at that little bounce on my front leg right there and look at pay attention to the toe i'll get a little closer pay attention to the big toe right here so here i'm on the ball of my foot i shift to the big toe now you can see my back leg is adjusting as well that the entire movement is cascading up my body the entire movement is cascading up my body so i'm going to connect that in a moment, I'll let the camera back up, but here we go again. So, inhaling up, exhaling down. Jab goes out, comes back. Jab goes out, comes back. Jab goes out, comes back. So that big toe, I'm shifting from the ball of my foot to the big toe so that you can feel the button press. So I can feel it. That button press helps me to sink in to a more specific um, uh, area of my foot. And one of the values of that is being able to recognize that your balance is not, you're not balanced on your feet. You're balanced on very particular sections of your feet. And you want to have mastery on choosing which section to utilize when. So my heel is best for me being passive and uh, strong, meaning that I'm on my heel and I don't necessarily need to deal with someone else's pressure too intensely. If I'm on my heels, like I'm in my 
uh, my half horse stance in Tai Chi, doing Ne Gong, et cetera, if I play my Tai Chi from my heels, I can easily be pushed off my heels, meaning that my toes are gonna flip up because my weight is mostly in the back and I flip back. So if someone's playing on their heels, they, they get pushed back. That's okay, but it's important to know that that's what happens if you only play on your heels. I used to only play on my heels because I was trained to emphasize heels when I was uh, only studying Wu style. Uh, but then as I uh, trained with Josh, I started getting a, a, a more dynamic understanding of uh, all the different uh, positions on a single foot. So the ball on the foot, obviously, if you're a boxer, you may talk about that a lot. Oh, ball of the foot, you're on the balls of your feet, you're on the balls of your feet. Okay, that's great. So you're on the balls of your feet, and then you strike. But what happens when you go to your toes? So let's, this big toe emphasis, inhale and pressing into the big toe here, is going to give you that little extra understanding of not only the weight distribution, but also controlling direction. Grandmaster Wayne CC Chan always talk about the toes as the direction. So the heel, you would define up to three nails. The heel is the anchor, the ball of the foot is the energy, and the toe directs that energy. So I want my, my, my punch going forward. I have my toe going forward, almost as if I'm about to shift my weight on it to walk to take my next step. So rather than taking a step, I take a punch, boom. It's as if I'm walking it forward. So big toe inhaling up, walking it forward, creating this beautiful shape structure. Here, my other hand is guarding my temple. And then exhale, coming down, still guarding the temple, inhaling like I'm pouring tea, throwing the hook. So now we're gonna start stepping up, stepping off. Uh, actually, first let's do that five times. Inhale up, down. Inhale around. Reset. Inhale up, jab, down. Coiling. Inhale over. Hook. Long hook. Reset. Inhale up. Do it from the angle. Down. Coiling. Inhale hook. Reset. Inhale up, jab. Exhale down. Coil. Inhale long hook. Reset. Inhale up, jab, tail down. Inhale, long hook, reset. Okay, so now let's do the step off. The step off, if you are a Tai Chi stylist or any type of stylist, um, it's really, really interesting because I watch a lot of uh, boxing trainers um, that are working with kids, especially like like uh, uh, training training uh, 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 folks who are new to boxing. And I really look at the footwork and there's some amazing stuff in the footwork. Um, but the, the, I, I want to emphasize detail. And that's not to say that these folks that I'm watching aren't detailed. What I want to emphasize is that um, the detail of the specific parts of the foot that we're, we're, we're moving on to, uh, et cetera. Uh, I, I, would, I would love to do more of their footwork myself uh, when I have more time. Uh, and then start bringing that and adapting even more of that uh, to my Tai Chi experience or make, bringing my Tai Chi experience into that. So for, for this, let's start with that idea. Inhaling, like I'm walking forward going the jab. And now, you want, you want to push, push up, Yeah, just for a minute to show them. Okay, okay, my mom wants to show you guys some pushing. Okay. So, and mom, then I'll do that. Mom's a little bit out of it for a while. Okay, so this is a huge, huge, huge deal. I've never, ever had my mom uh, <laughs> do it, so I'm very grateful. <laughs> Okay, so okay. I almost forgot. Almost okay, so and th this will be helpful too. If you if you're a boxer, or you're, you're 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 having up here. My mom and I are about to do single-handed push hands, meaning uh, we're, we're this is a, a uh, uh, often the first game that you might play in push hands. But if you're boxing, you see you have the little clamp here. You can ride someone's wrist. You can ride someone's jab. She might jab my face. I I stick to her hand as she goes back. I, I throw my little jab out. So, but we're gonna just do some gentle, soft pushing here. I don't know this. Even if she, she, even if she hasn't done it for a while, she always really maintains uh, <laughs> and her 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 uh, softness. Or should I say, her stickiness. 
And the stickiness in Tai Chi means the ability to follow the opponent. Concept here too, for those who might be. We just I'm talked about what, 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 uh, the, Hi guys. <laughs> for, for for this concept. I was just telling her, push like you're going to sleep on, and that's different than energizing, inhaling, and doing the the this this um, reverse breathing punch. It's actually the complete opposite. The reverse breathing punch is like you're waking up, versus the going to sleep drop exhaling down and you can do and oftentimes you want to mix up both of them meaning that you want to do the you want to inhale come up exhale drop down and go to sleep inhale come up, exhale inhale exhale and so and you might inhale inhale exhale so you might and that and that's a two-stage inhalation two-stage exhalation you can do a four-stage inhalation etc uh all these things are, are, are really really important uh, to recognize that it's, there's not just one way you want to combine based on the situation you're in, the breath work, the visualization, all of the mechanics. I'm going to be careful with this elbow. I broke it once. You want, you want to switch? No, I like it. Okay. Just got to be careful. Yeah, slow it down. Slow it down and really think about taking more space when you press it. Yeah, taking more of my space. I mean, you know, going to sit with me and press me, press me, press me, press me, press me. Beautiful. And stay connected. And then, and then as I press you back, soften, soften, release, and then press. Beautiful. Beautiful. I haven't done like push hands like this. Like, oh, this is really great for me. Okay, I think I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm too open. Can you stretch your shoulder up? Bye, guys. Start First time I've ever having my mom <laughs> on my Tai Chi uh, videos. At all. She normally avoids the camera like this, so you, you can't see her. So, uh, uh, Grandma's here. cooking. I mean, mom's cooking. Yeah. Said, Grandma. My son's not here today. Over here more. All right. So, stepping off. Ooh, inhaling up. Exhale. And now, so I was talking about all these boxing instructors, etc., that I'm watching, and how they do the step offs, how they switch the feet, etc. There's always some dynamic stuff. So, if I'm doing a boom, boom, I'm doing a little bit of a pulse. Meaning that I am pulsing, I'm gonna angle this down. I am pulsing, I'm walking my punch forward, that first jab, exhaling, and now my weight bounces. As it comes down, it bounces back here. It bounces to this foot and this hip. So I hit, bounce, and look at that. Now my weight, I'm pushing off of this foot. I'm starting to coil into this back hip just for a moment so I can step off. So coiling, and when I say pulse, in Tai Chi, especially oftentimes what we'll do is we'll do a pulse, meaning we'll step off, we'll shift the weight just for a moment to readjust the front foot. Meaning sometimes you'll see people 
do both heel toe kind of uh, switching and did a lot in Taiwan. Uh, my challenge with the heel toe switching is that sometimes people will just switch with weight on their leg already, which essentially grinds the kneecap. So you want to be cautious of grinding. You can get really into shifting and turning your weight with your um, turning the feet with the weight still going down the leg, which is not really that good for the joint. So I recommend throwing the punch and doing this little pulse. It's a, it's less overt than this. It happens in a fraction of a second. And we did the jab, dropping down. Notice that I've already coiled here. I can feel the pressure of the ball on my foot. And I'm about to push into the big toe of my back leg so I can step. And that step is going to step, and I'm gonna do my best to keep my toes pointed at the center line of my opponent the entire time. So from the front, I throw my jab. My jab is out, and I coil back in as we were doing. You see the back foot? I'm, my weight's in the back foot now, and I'm going to step. Look at how my toe is now still pointed at my imaginary opponent, who should essentially be here so I can throw that hook. So let's, let's do that again. I have my jab, inhale, here, dropping down, step out, boom. I just did the step off. And notice that when I step off, I readjust my stance to be, once again, my fighting stance. So wherever I step off to, I readjust my stance. And if you are unfamiliar with this exercise that I'm doing, and the reverse of it, if I want to go right, I step with my right. If I want to go left, I step with my left. So just basic uh, boxing footwork. Uh, you will, it's very rare you'll see me cross over. Uh, that's not to say it doesn't happen, um, but you know, sometimes it needs to happen, but it's very rare when you see this. I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> But uh, let's do it again. Inhaling up, exhale up to the back foot. Feel that weight. Step. Inhale again. Pouring the teeth. Reset. Inhale, jab. Exhale and down. Feel the weight going to the back foot. And step. Turning the foot toward the opponent, the imaginary opponent. Inhale, launching. Because you can feel when you step, you're really wound up. You are. When you step, boom, you're really wound up. You step and you're more wound up in this leg and you boom, launch it out. So, so again, inhaling up, exhale to the back leg. Step on the angle, look how much more wound up I am. Inhale, throwing the hook. Again, jab, exhaling, going to sleep. Step on the angle, inhale, throwing the hook. Now, let's do the other side, meaning the, we talked about the, the this, this fighter who uh, throws hooks and steps off to, the, to uh, the opposite side of the hook he's throwing. So he's essentially, so the opponent is blocking and then getting hit on the other side. So he, oh, and then he'll, he'll double it up, meaning that he'll throw the hook, he'll throw a jab, get you to cover, throw the hook, step around, hit, hit, hit. Throw another hook, step around, hit, 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 body shot, boom, step around. He might throw another body shot, step around. So he'll keep doing the same kind of thing over and over again just to uh, uh, confuse the opponent of not knowing where the hit's going to come from. And then, of course, switch it up and step with it, blah, 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 boom, step with it. So uh, always playing with the pattern. Of course, your power, the, the, uh, how hard you're hitting the opponent, et cetera, also matters as well. It's not just about them getting hit, it's them uh, feeling like they don't want to get hit anymore, we can cover our more. So let's do this again, but this time step to the other way. Inhaling up, forward, exhaling down. And now, since I want to go right, I step with my right. But as I step with my right, boom, look at that, right here. So that beautiful moment, I love this moment, Inhaling up, exhaling down. And you can always make this little exhale down, feel like it's going to be another strike. Sometimes you want to make the opponent, you want to fake them out. And they may think that this is going to be a strike. 
And so depending on how you whip the shoulders from the waist, et cetera, I recommend from the waist. Some, some people may not um, think, on, think down here when it comes to that moment, but I do recommend keeping the lower down 10, the focus there, whipping the breath work through the shoulder. If you want to think that as if it's going to be a cross, so it could be a cross, but I'm not going to build a cross. I'm going to jab up, exhaling down, step, boom, and throw that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hook. Turn a little bit so you can see. Turn a little bit so you can see. Look at all this space. My opponent's right around here. So I'm throwing the hook right to the head. And now I'm going to step across fully. So inhaling, down, step, and then now cross. And you can exhale across more. So let's inhale, exhale, inhale, short cross, exhale. Throw like a little bomb. Boom, boom. Okay, so inhaling, exhale, step, inhale, and bring the other foot back. Exhale. So that's a little stagger step. Um, and so find the footwork that works best for you, but I'll, I'll be more precise in how I'm articulating it here. Inhaling up, exhaling down, and then step, shifting the weight as you inhale. As you feel the weight shift, ball of foot, big toe, last hand comes out, You're pouring the tea again. And now you can, if you want, Exhale as you bring the one foot closer. And now this foot closer, your opponent's here. So somehow you're going to have to get back to facing them fully. And you may want to throw this side over. There's many, many different options here. So I don't want to make it sound like there's only one way to reposition yourself. You could boom, boom, here. You could totally do that. Uh, I want to keep this in the orthodox, or if you're playing softball, um, whichever one you're playing with, I want to keep it in that uh, with that stance forward, just for the purpose of this exercise. So inhaling up, jab, exhaling down, stepping across, inhaling up, throwing the hook on the angle. Let's bring that back leg forward and point it toward the opponent. So look how my toe is facing this way here. My opponent's right here, it's facing that way. I have the jab here, the opponent's Still covering from that jab. And now I'm going to use this closed distance moment to push my hand into their head and push my leg back. So I throw the jab and I push from here to push this out. So I counterbalance myself, throwing the fist and the foot. And of course, the entire time we're doing this to truly bring Tai Chi mechanics into it, we have to have the breath work and visualization mixed with the body mechanics. Otherwise, we're not really doing the Tai Chi. And that's not to say that that's all the Tai Chi is, but it's a major component of it. It's very valuable. So inhaling up, covering the head, jabs coming out. It's actually over here. Exhaling down, I'm going to step and inhale, throwing that hook wide. And I'm going to exhale, bringing my, my hand in. Now look how I'm whipping my waist. My foot is retracting, pulling from where my back foot is coming back in, facing the opponent, and my back hand is pushing out as my right foot, as the corresponding leg steps back. Exhale. And then you're essentially set up. If you, if you throw a short bound, you're set up for uh, if you need to throw a short, meaning that you're closer range, because you, if you've stepped on this angle, you're probably uh, closer to your opponent now than you were prior. You threw a jab, you threw a long cross, and then, uh, or it's not as long as the, the first cross we threw, uh, foot, first hook we threw. So it might be shorter, and then you might be in uh, sh short to mid-range mid um, hand striking distance. Uh, versus long range, which is a jab, uh, mid range and close range striking distance. So if you are, you push and get your bearings and start throwing that, that jab there. 
And so let's actually build from there because we're talking about, and I would like to cover today, uh, which I will not be able to cover the mid and low in the same level of detail as this, but let's cover uh, adding another layer to that. So um, and let's add the mid layer. So inhale up, exhale in down. Inhale, hook. That's what we did first. And now inhale, exhale in down. Inhale, push off the back, step the other side. And now let's do the other Inhaling up, dropping down, step, inhale, and then exhale, push off. Well, we may have this short little cross here. And now let's start doing a body shot. Short little cross here, dropping down, inhale. Or you can drop it in and exhale, whichever one you want, but I'm going to do an inhale. So I just did an exhale here. I want to inhale and really expand. And look at this. I'm inhaling and I'm expanding. My, my body mechanic is as if I'm reaching my fingers through on an angle. As if I'm reaching and stretching. Reaching through the curve is what we often refer to it as here. Meaning that my hand is, my arm is stretching. I'm actually stretching. This is an overt stretch. This is a reaching through the curve stretch, meaning that I'm reaching my shoulder blade forward. I'm reaching my elbow down. I'm reaching my fingers up. All of them are reaching as if they're all jumping out of the body at a very angle. So when I'm doing that, it essentially gives me the longest and strongest range uh, within this tight circle. This tighter circle. So I'm covering, it's almost like I'm covering more distance in the shorter <laughs> uh, uh, span here, given that I'm reaching longer than if I wasn't reaching. If I wasn't reaching, I was just throwing this, keeping it all too tight. Uh, I may not get the full, um, uh, all of my, my muscle fibers working to together in town. Again, this, this works in my experience, and I love practicing it on, on bags and then playing with it and sparring. Um, I highly recommend body to body sparring to train uh, some of these, these uh, uh, stronger body shots Boom, right, right around here. So let's just go inhaling up, exhale down. Inhale, step, exhale, punch, pushing off the back and then dropping down. Inhale up. And you can dig here. You can either lift this front leg up and pivot it or you can shift the weight forward and reach all the way through. It really depends on, on your style, also depends on the situation. Um, but I want to focus on just keeping the, the weight solid on the front leg for this particular uh, uh, session. So inhaling up, exhale down, step. Inhaling high, bring the foot in as you exhale. Look at how all this right here is adjusting. So right here. And now inhale, keeping that leg here. Inhale, this is a punch to the gut. You just had the opponent covering up here. You hit him high, he was covering on this side. You hit him high again. Now he's covering up here on the side. You hit him low. And so that hitting low, if we were gonna do another technique again, it really just depends on, on the reality of the situation. Uh, it may work to do a low kick here, it may not, depends on, you might only be boxing, etc. cetera. Um, either one is totally fine. Uh, but I, I wanna make sure I always give you quality in these training sessions. Uh, so if, you were, if we were gonna do this, I would wanna give you a little bit more detail on bringing the Tai Chi mechanic into a, a Thai, Muay Thai leg kick. Uh, but then we'll save that maybe for the next video. Maybe we'll do Muay Thai leg kicks with Tai Chi mechanics. That's super interesting. <laughs> That's a super interesting video, okay. So let's bring it again, let's review. We're gonna do five of each. First going forward, inhaling up, exhale down, inhaling hook, reset. Inhaling up, exhale down, inhaling hook, reset. Inhaling up, exhale down, inhaling up. It's a long hook, reset. Inhaling up, exhale down, inhaling up, reset. Long hook, inhaling up, exhale down, inhaling up, reset. And now let's do stepping off to the same side as the hook. Inhaling up, exhaling down, pulsing into the back leg, pulsing into that back leg. Step, push off that back. Look at that weight. You can see the weight. You can see the weight. My weight is on this back ball of my foot. 
and it's pushing off the big toe. Boom, you should feel that beautiful moment, that beautiful moment. And that beautiful moment, it feels, could feel very Tai Chi for a second. Ah, it feels very, very Tai Chi. Bring that feeling of Tai Chi into this structure, the smaller structure, the more practical structure. So, inhaling up, exhaling down, pushing off the back leg. Boom, I still feel the same openness. Look at how I'm opening my hands, spinning my hand out to cover my head even more. I'm spinning this hand out. Everything is spinning. Everything is spinning. I almost look like I'm hitting a baseball bat. Everything is spinning right here. And I step. And now inhale up, reset. Exhaling down, pushing up the back leg. Inhaling up, spinning. And a reset. Inhaling up, exhale down, pushing up the back leg, step, keep your toes pointed at the center line of your opponent. Inhaling up, reset. Inhale, exhale down, push off the back, inhaling up, reset. Now, finally, for what we did today, and we'll add a little body shot to it as well. We're going to go step off to the, the opposite side. So we're going to the left hand, we're stepping off to the right side. So, Inhale up, exhale down, pushing off. So I'm coiled into this leg. It should be very easy for you to remove weight from the back leg because you're so coiled into the front, meaning the back hip softens into the lead groin and all the weight falls down the inside of that leg to the heel, not to the ball of the foot. The ball of the foot is second there. So you go heel first, ball of the foot, big toe. So boom. Heel wall foot, big toe, and then step, inhale. It looks like I'm going across, but I'm actually coming around. I want to go wide and around. And then exhaling. Again, tilting, bringing the back foot forward. One, I'm exhaling like I'm going to sleep on my opponent. As I exhale, I drop the weight, oh, punch out, and then inhale, body shot. Do it again. Inhale, go to sleep, exhale, step, inhale, big hook, bring it in, exhale, go to sleep, drop that hard cross, and then inhale, body shot. Again, resetting, inhale, exhale, step, inhale, exhale, bomb. Let's do it again. Boom. One, down, exhale, step, inhale, exhale, inhale. Two more. Inhale, exhale, uh oh, step, <laughs> inhale, exhale, step, inhale, exhale, inhale. And one more. Inhale, exhale, step, inhale, uh, exhale, inhale. So you want to have that every time you breathe, it should feel like you're conducting an orchestra. I really mean that. And it sounds poetic and, and grand, and it should feel like that every time we take a breath. So let's, let's feel, let me show how that, that might feel uh, in, 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 in a faster speed. So, so just faster speed, inhaling up, exhaling in, exhale, step. Inhaling up, exhale, down. Inhale. So, just really want to feel, even when you slow down, and you may notice too, when I, was, when I did it faster, I did a two-stage uh, two exhalation. So, and that's because I, I, for that particular moment, that's how the breathing pattern felt right to me. So, we may train certain ways, but... Uh, as my coach, Dan Caulfield, used to say, so this is Josh Wasting's uh, right hand, uh, he would say, you train 100%, but sometimes you can only expect 70 live. And if you get that 70 it's strong enough, you're going to get the technique. You're going to get, you're going to accomplish your goal. So, and I was just talking to a buddy, uh, one of my Harvard Wharton business school buddies, uh, about um, that same concept in business. And same thing applies. Like your 70% should be strong enough for you to get to sale, to get the, uh, uh, to get accomplish the goal. So uh, practice these with breath work, the visualization. Let's stretch up. 
always stretch, always massage yourself after you do any training, uh, even if it's just a little bit. If you finish training without stretching, I, I personally say you have not finished training. So always do the stretching. Uh, it will help you immensely for longevity. So two up with the heavens. First, notice that before I even I say I've looked in heaven, but the first thing I'm doing is actually going into gilded pillar. So my gilded pillar is so ingrained in me that before I do uplifting heaven, I have to get into this posture that we did in the end. So I'm counting up. Bobby, you want to join me with this last? Um, uplifting heaven? No, no. Okay. How about the point to, the, to uh, push in this? I told them some of the points. Inhaling up. Sorry, I'm telling you, but I've got to touch the spell. Sorry, guys. They're all as big as it is. I'm saying that. Okay, feet two fists apart. This up. Fingers back. Chest up. Hips forward. Wind up those. Exhale, up back. Soft and knee. Inhaling up. Fingers to the back. Chest up. Hips forward. Wind up those. Exhale, up back. Fingers up. Soften the knees. Once you go down, keep the legs straight going down. And they're not like, you don't have to be super locked with the intention. So you want to keep them as straight as possible. I'm still a little uh, not warm enough yet. So notice that I can't touch the floor. I have to bounce to touch the floor. But once I get down here, exhale, soften the knees, inhale, and we'll do one more. Fingers back. Chest up. Hips forward. Wait on the toes. Exhale, bump back. Fingers. So we need to inhale me up. Inhale the white line to the belly, put one foot forward, heel on the ground, toe up, exhale, wash the light down the legs. Inhale like you're bringing the white line to the belly. Exhale, wash the light down the leg. Inhaling up, white line to the belly. Now we're switching 45 degrees, man. First we were here, now we're here. Exhale, wash the light down the legs. Inhale up, switch 45 degrees. Now we're next. Switch 90 degrees. Now I'm here, meaning that one foot is forward, other foot is to my 90 degree side. And exhale, wash the light down the leg. Inhaling up, notice that as I come up, my foot rotates in. Notice that as I do that, my hips turn in. My waist stays fairly stationary. I'm not whipping my waist, I'm only whipping the hips, and my whole body goes with it. That's what I and I turn, exhale, down the other way. Inhale up, one leg to the belly. Inhale to the right side. Inhale one side. Inhale over the top of the head. Exhale now. Inside. Up and inside. The shoulders, the backs. Yeah. Motion of blood returns to the source. So I'm not just picking up my hands and dropping them down. And if I was just picking up my hands and dropping them down, um, and I felt that relaxing, that's great. But what we're actually doing here is we're in the gilded pillow posture. So let's be precise. Weight on the heels, toes forward. My hips become that bowl of water. My imaginary strength is straight up. My knees are softened, my organs are softened. And with all of that in mind, the shoulder blades going down, slight floating heart, but all the emphasis is the breath remains in the belly. Now look what happens. From here, from this posture, when my fingers activate, specifically the fingertips, not even the wrists, the, all the attention right here on the fingertips, just the fingertips, my breath is being, is, the fingers are pulling the breath. The breath is pulling the fingers up. And exhale, the breath lowers only the fingers. Anything else that happens, you want to do your best to minimize. Meaning if your elbow starts sticking out, soften up here, relax, so that's unnecessary tension. You want to optimize your movement and do only, you only utilize the tension that's necessary, that helps you conserve energy, that helps you really be mindful of what you're actually doing that's required versus what's too much. And you want that in all areas of your life. So inhaling up, just the fingertips. Exhaling down. And notice when I just started talking to you too, my balls, my weight, my weight was on the ball of my feet. Forward, 
So I'm in a more aggressive stance, but I shifted as I was, was talking, as I started doing the, the exercise, because I have to reset into my yielded pillar posture. It's the passive heels. Balls of the foot are, are active and more aggressive. Heel to pass, relax. Just the fingertips, not even the palms, just the fingertips. Put the hands together. Yes, that is simply a rock rock on my t shirt. Martial arts. <laughs> Action film like a tapping around. Massage. Floating your butt. Again. On the other side, floating your butt. And up and down, sternum, collarbone, chin. And for the heart, switch, top and bottom, switch, side, bottom, and reverse it. Now let's actually do the scalp. Oh, face up the front to the side, up the front to the side, up the side, around the ears, up, over, down, under, up, over, down, under, strong. Pressure for the immune system. And now uh, fingers to the scalp, front to back, back front, front to back, back front, and then the side in. Front to back, back front. And the side, the side, the side. So important for the scalp. This side. Uh, one of my favorite uh, celebrity interviews uh, was Bradley Cooper. <clears throat> and someone asking him how he keeps his hair so thick and full. And he's like, got a massage. And, you know, that's, that's such a Tai Chi thing to, to say. <laughs> that's not to say that, that that is the only factor, but um, I do think it's really, really important to uh, remember that the circulation in our scalps that starts slapping. Um, that we can, we can augment that. And let's grab the scalp maybe like that. And not just for the purpose of, of vanity, I think really more so for, for making sure that we are consistently massaging and massaging and grabbing a part of the scalp, massaging and then I release and grab another part. But that we're consistently massaging out tension in places where it, it, it uh, can gather. Because you, know, you may shave your head, you may uh, have, have, have uh, uh, a various hair, patterns or lack of hair patterns on your scalp. On your scalp. But one of the things that I've noticed, especially when I've dealt with um, uh, my own thinning hair at different points in my life due to stress, um, that, the, that the areas of my scalp, the areas of my scalp would feel cold. And I can't, I can't stress this enough of being like paying really close attention to the circulation in your head and your scalp. Um, I would, and even to, to this day, um, I massage like I'm doing right now. I'll grab my scalp and I'll grab here. And I, I learned these massages from my Wu style sifu, Keith Tong. Um, so, but I, I massage my scalp and I really, really work the areas that might feel a little more cold, like they don't have as much circulation. Uh, but I have to pay attention. And when I notice other, other men in particular, people I've seen in women as well, um, but when I notice other men that have had similar, um, like spotted, like thinning, uh, but it's not like in a pattern, just in a particular, like like random, seemingly random, um, I've noticed like the the uh, dealing with a lot of stress and dealing with um, and how that just affects how the thinking affects the circulation in the head. So I, I cannot stress enough, um, or I cannot emphasize. Let's remove the word stress. Can I emphasize enough uh, paying attention to where you might feel the tension in your scalp, uh, where this, you might feel the muscles flexing in your head. Uh, if you're dealing with any, anything in particular in your life that might cause that um, and really the self-care uh, to help. Um, uh, and if you can't get rid of those challenges and it's tough emotionally, et cetera, uh, at the very least you can give yourself a nice head massage. <laughs> so 
Uh, at the end of the, my, the scalp massage, always going to the top of the forehead, massage around and reverse it. Temples. And reverse the circle for the temples under the eyes. And reverse the circles under the eyes. Top and bottom. Switch. Side. Yeah. On the gums, above the gum, in the groove underneath the cheekbone, above the gums, and then in the groove under the gums, on the bottom, the tongue, and reverse it. Flick the fingers out, thumbs, one, two, three, grab one. All right, uh, let's massage the palm before we finish up. Drill, two, three, tap. Top and bottom massaging and sides. Top and bottom massaging and sides. Fingers falling into the natural grooves. The, mas the massaging fingers falling into natural grooves on the receiving finger. That's where you're finding those wonderful pressure points. And massage. Remember these massages are like, are helpful for the, all the organs, all these pressure points correspond with the organs of the body. I wish my mom would do this with me right now, but mom, massage, this here we go, massaging around, top and bottom, and sides, 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 top and bottom, and sides. One, two, three, grab one, two, one up, look together. Yeah. Inhale, white light from the belly, close the eyes. Spread through the whole body. Use the sound that we're going to make to go into your bone marrow. And that may sound you know, off the cuff. What I mean is visualize, use the sound as a vehicle for your visualization. So you want to ride the sound waves into your bones. Visualize the sound waves penetrating the bones, going as deep as the bone marrow, going in and, and helping to correct anything that needs correction in the bone marrow, et cetera. So you're going to, again, you're going to take the sound, you're going to ride the sound wave, which is a vibration. Every time you're speaking, you're making it. And you're going to ride that visually, closing your eyes into your bone marrow as we do this final exercise, okay? So inhale, the breath into the belly, the light gathers in the belly, and you're gonna push white light into the bone marrow through this sound vibration. Go. Uh, inhale, white light, toes to the top of the head like a tidal wave coming up. And then exhale, roll it down the head, the back of the head, down the back of the body like a waterfall, head to heels. And as we exhale, we're going to say uh, again and wash the bone marrow. Uh, we're going to inhale up the left side like a tidal wave, foot to head, and exhale down the right side with this sound, the waterfall. Uh, inhale, white light to the belly, push it down the legs into the ground. And then it cascades through the feet into the floor or the earth, wherever you are, and come up and around like a fountain in reverse. Let the vibration, again, you're riding the sound waves. You're paying so close attention to those sound waves that you can start to visualize whatever color you want coming out from you and collecting around you, making your, your environment that much brighter because of your presence. So inhale, white light to the belly and push it through the heels into the ground. And one more time, white light to the belly. This time we're gonna push it to the top of the head. It's gonna come out like a fountain in all directions and go all around you, making a big bubble around you. Very important to note that the visualization we just drew are the natural magnetic lines in the body. So super, super important to recognize that we want to uh, augment and support the things that are naturally around us and do our best to, to become conscious of them and to uh, 
optimize our experience of it as much as possible. So really feel yourself full of the white light, the environment full of the white light, have gratitude for your body, the space that you're in, the good people in your life. And I'm really, really, really grateful for you. I love you guys. Uh, you know, every week we do this and the training is, it always happens on Zoom. Maybe I'll start doing, oh, I forgot to, I totally forgot to stream this on TikTok. Man, next time I will, I forgot. Um, I will stream on TikTok next week. Uh, I did it two weeks ago and everyone loved it. Um, so, uh, but it's on Zoom, we stream and uh, maybe I'll start just streaming directly to YouTube. But I think um, because this goes on, on multiple channels, maybe I'll keep it here. Uh, maybe I'll start doing a, a Facebook stream too simultaneously, just so we can expand it as much as possible and, and get this to as many people as possible. So this is Justice for Hires, Tai Chi to the People. Happens every week, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Tuesdays. And uh, I'm Coach Jan. Uh, I'm the former captain and coach of the U.S. Tai Chi Push Hands team. Justice for Hire is a show we are producing with a community, a global cast, and anyone can join that cast from their phone. So you can join from justiceforhire.app and you can just learn more about what we're doing from justiceforhire.com or at justiceforhire on any and all social media. Um, you can find me on my YouTube at Coach Jan's Tai Chi Push Hands. Uh, Justice for Hire, of course, is uh, produced by my startup company, uh, the world's first social film studio, Real World, and you can invest in part of the company, huge opportunity, on wefunder.com slash real world. That's R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. And you can support me and this wonderful Tai Chi collective that we have by going to uh, patreon.com slash Jan's Tai Chi. I just launched my Patreon. I'm going to put out the official video announcement of it uh, in the coming days. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Uh, shout out again to Sam, who is uh, my first uh, patron on there. So I love you guys. Ask any questions you ever might have. Share any ideas that you ever might have, uh, because this is all about building bridges to uh, wisdom and excellence and practicality for all of us to share. I love you guys. Talk my to you soon. My mom said bye and you know, best wishes with Tai Chi. Oh, my mom said bye and best wishes with Tai Chi. I love you guys.